I'm Tanisha and you're watching this video with JustTutors.com. Today we are going to learn about Euclid's geometry and in this video we'll first work with some basic definitions, then with some axioms, then postulates and then theorems related to this geometry. Before moving on to the topic, let us try some warm-up questions first and if you want to try the questions by yourself, you can pause the video and match your answer later. Question number 1. Match the following with the correct pictures. So line is right there, then point is there, solid is here and flat surface is here. Pat your back if you've got all the answers absolutely correct. Now let's move on to the topic. Let's have a quick introduction on Euclid's symmetry. So Euclidean geometry is a mathematical system which is attributed to the Alexandrian Greek mathematician Euclid. Euclid's method consists in assuming a small set of intuitively appealing axioms and postulates and then deducing many other proportions, that is theorems, from these. Before moving further, let us understand about few terms that we have just used. So the first one is axioms and postulates. So these are self-evident statements that are believed to be true without any written proof. However, on the other hand, proposition and theorems are statements that have a proper written proof using reasonings and some axioms and postulates. Now let's have a look on few axioms given by Euclid. So in his book 1 on elements, he has listed around 23 definitions. However, we are going to look at some of them. Mathematicians do not agree with them anymore as they are a bit vague in themselves. So the first one says, things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. So in a way, if we say that A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then we assume that A is also equal to C. This is what the statement is trying to say. Let's look at the second one that says if equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. So we know that A is equal to A and likewise B is equal to B. And if we go on and add these, so A add B is going to be equal to A add B always. So this is what this statement second is trying to say. Let's look at the third one. This is quite related to the second one. We just need to use a different operation. So if equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are equals. Let's come to the fourth one. Things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. So things with which overlap to one another are equal. Let's come to fifth one that says the whole is greater than the part. So this is self-explanatory in itself. Let's come to sixth one that says things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. So let's say A is equal to 2B. And on the other hand, if I say C is equal to 2B as well. So in that case, we can straight away deduce that A is equal to C. And point number 7 is also related to point number 6 that says things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. Then let's move to some Euclid's postulates that he has given us. Postulate number 1. A straight line which may be drawn from one point to another point. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely. It is nothing but a line segment. So if you look at a line there it has no particular end point but if we try to terminate that at both the ends it would become a line segment then postulate number three a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius then all right angles are equal to one another and then fifth one if a straight line falling on two straight lines making the interior angle on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles then the two straight lines if produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of the angles is less than two right angles. So in a way if we try to write that down mathematically that's gonna be like this. So first of all we need to make two lines such that we know that they meet at some point. So we'll have a look like this and then we're talking about the two interior angles. So the first angle would be this one and the other would be that one. So now, if we go and actually extend the lines, they are definitely going to meet at some point. However, at the other point, they are never going to meet. 
so this is what this postulate number 5 is trying to say then we'll come to that one which is Euclid's theorem so two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common we'll try to prove that by contradiction so we assume that here are two lines that have more than one point in common now in order to prove the theorem we need to prove our own assumption wrong so let's say we have two lines R and S and they intersect at two points P and Q this means there are two lines passing through two distant points P and Q which is a contradiction to the axiom that only one line can pass to two distinct points hence our assumption is wrong and so two distinct lines can't have more than one point in common and further we've got two more equivalent version of Euclid's fifth postulate that we have just read here so let's have a look on them the first one says for every line L and for every point P not lying on L there exists a unique line M passing through P and parallel to L it would be easier if we try to relate the point with this diagram here so that's the line L the point P which is not on L and that's a unique line M which is parallel to L likewise the second point says two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line and now we've got some practice questions for you question number one two and then three so you can pause the video and try all the questions by yourself and you can match your answers here thank you for watching thank you for watching the video for more please log on to justtutors.com